good deal. So we've got right. it all started up here and we'll see folks starting to come on in. So hi everybody, come on in. We're letting everybody into the room a couple of minutes early. So we we're just talking about both weather and our cats and dogs. So we invite you <laughs> to say hi on the chat and let us know where you're from and uh, whether you have a cat or a dog, let's take that instead of weather for the day and see where you're at. And we can say hi to everybody. Hi, Rebecca. See? Hi, we Rebecca. There we go. <laughs> Ooh, and, Arizona. Nice. See, there's a place. I love Arizona. Good weather all year round. You know, a little hot in the summer, right? But otherwise it's pretty good. So, oh, in Palm Desert, she's got a cat and a dog. See? Oh, a cat and a dog. That's awesome. They really get along well together. My, my daughter's cat will go and, and tell the big Doberman what to do. She's really funny. She literally will, no, you can't go into this part of the house or another. So it's kind of funny, but. Michelle, pumpkin is the cutest name ever for a pet. I love it. <laughs> that is How cute is that? Pumpkin. Funny. Yeah. Yeah, we, I love that your dog's name is uh, Chucky Joyce. Chucky, That's so great. Little Cavalier of King Charles Spaniel. He is Chucky and he's so funny. He like almost bites his lip and grins at you. He's like, hmm. And they're like, you know, <laughs> how is he doing this? Does he know he's being too cute? Uh, you got a puggle dog in Big Bear, California. Hey, Rama, nice to have you here. Hey, we're getting everybody on in. We'll be starting in just about a minute. We figured we'd just let everybody come on in and say hi. We have Springer Spaniel Puppy. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, coming in April. You're going to be up for a long time. <laughs> hey, we even have Ben joining us here today. Hi, Ben. You can't hear me yet. It's just starting. He's getting his audio going there. So, hi, Ben. So let's see, everybody's from, from where, where are you from? New Jersey. I'm from Long Island in New York. Hi, New Jersey. My, my younger daughter ooh, lives in Hoboken. Here's another New Jersey. Hi, person. Nice to meet you. I saw in Orlando. I have family in Orlando. There you go. Ooh, <gasps> Orlando. That means Disney World, my favorite place. Uh, they, they work for <laughs> Disney, so it's real cheap for us. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay, that's awesome, Jennifer. So you have you have family that work for Disney now, or they have? Yeah, they do now, and I have a few that have retired from Disney. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. I bet you get in for free, don't you? Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, well, I've, my clock shows uh, 2 o'clock Eastern, so we're going to get started. I want to welcome everybody here. Um, and as people keep funneling on in, we've got a lot of people who've signed up for this. And oh, Tracy Hall's here. Hi, Tracy. Um, and um, we're going to keep you on mute, but please use the chat um, to communicate amongst yourselves and with us. You can also use the question um, portion. And um, so my colleague here, Michelle Magram, say hi, Michelle. Um, Hi. Michelle, she's going to be in the background and be working on the chat. So she'll answer questions that you have. This is your time. Definitely ask questions. Um, and she will help with that. And then at the end, she'll come back in and help us do some questions and answers. And our guest speaker today is Jennifer Castleman. Okay. Um, so excited to have you here. You guys are in for a real treat. Jennifer is from Center Grove, um, uh, Indiana. And she's going to share with you how she uses some of these uh, materials here with her students for job skill development. So I'm going to ask the two ladies, they can turn their video off for a couple of minutes right now. And I'm just going to get us going and started in the right direction. And then we'll call you back on shortly. So see you in a bit. Bye. And Bye. let's get started, folks. Wow, we've got over 100 people here already. There was a lot registered. So thank you very much for taking your time today for the solutions for life skills and job skill instruction. My name is Joyce Whitby. I see a lot of familiar names. So I know some of you have been here before for our webinar Wednesdays. We're glad to have you back. Um, I, if you've been here before, you've seen me start with this because this is what it's about. The life of a transition coordinator is everything, right? It's just a little bit of everything as we go along. But in our eyes, first and foremost, front and center is hands-on career exploration. So we're going to try and make some sense out of this and put it into some order for everybody as we move along. 
Um, but of course, in our world in special education, one size does not fit all. And we're really happy about that because it means that we really can just cherish and um, celebrate the differences in each one of our students. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're able to take things and customize it for them. If it is your first time, I will tell you that a little bit about Education Associates. I'm gonna make it brief. This is not intended to be a sales pitch. If you wanna get a personal tour, we can do that for you at another time. Um, but what we're very proud about here is that we've been in the business here for over 40 years just about 40 years, I would say. I'm not gonna turn us to over until we hit July, then I'll say over 40. Um, but it's because of that adherence to hands-on that I think we've withstood the test of time. And um, during that time, we've learned um, from folks who are in your positions in schools. And so we've included just about every, all the suggestions we get from everybody, evidence-based practice, data collection tools, universal design for learning, just a whole bunch of things that you can really make use of. Um, the instructional guides are great because they were written by teachers and it really helps you identify how you can differentiate things and make it fit your class and your students. So that's what we're all about. You don't have to take my word for it. We've been around long enough that we've been approved and validated by a number of different sources. So Department of Ed, uh, National Dropout Prevention, um, and the, at the bottom here, we've got our case endorsement, which we're super proud of. Uh, just got that last year. And for all of our friends from case that might be on, thank you very much for helping us through that process. It's kind of like a little mini dissertation. I say it all the time, but they have a really serious set of rubrics. And we had to map all of our research for product design to that. And then they look to see, does that correlate to what we found in the field with people who are using the materials? And then once you put all of that together, then they make you defend it. So I keep asking, you know, the second one I've gotten, can I put some letters after my name? Or I don't think they're gonna let me do that, but um, a lot of fun. Um, one thing people usually will ask me about is this NOCTI, N-O-C-T-I. That's a National Occupational Competency Testing Institute. And they provide these micro credentials, these digital badges for people who are in different fields in healthcare and construction and, um, and so forth. So if you're gonna be a phlebotomist, um, you can uh, get a digital badge on being a phlebotomist and that would be one of your credentials. Um, we worked with them to get credentials for our curriculum so that our kiddos can go in and learn about oh, automotive uh, auto body detailing or a greenhouse worker or whatever it might be. And they can get a credential in that that they could show their employers or pr prospective employers. So it's kind of cool um, to give you a little bit of a baseline so that as Jennifer shares what she does in her classroom, we've got two main parts to our curriculum. There's a project discovery over here on the, the left with the green writing. And that is our hands-on curriculum from elementary age students with career awareness. And then everything else is all high school and young adult. But then we go on into career exploration, well over hundred careers just in that. Um, we've got an adapted version for our students with more um, severe and profound needs. And then we have job skills training, which is really like a full semester's worth of work. Um, and then we have our life skills materials. So um, they are, what we call our soft skills, right? Those things that we can help train them how to get a job, but the soft skills, we're gonna let you, uh, let them keep a job. And um, there's a lot of different titles in each one of these. There's lots of different ways you can get it. If you'd like more of a in-depth tour, we'll share with you at the end where you can go on our website and you can sign up and get a free Zoom overview. I've had a lot of people ask us for those so that they can bring in like a team of people from their school or district. And then we sit down and we'll work with the whole team and kind of go over how these things fit for them. So that's the career ready, job ready and life ready. I have to say, I, I really love some of these titles in here because there are things in there that we don't necessarily take time to teach. We kind of brush over them, but they really, really work when you give some uh, direct instruction in there. So just things like, let's say po positive attitudes in getting a job, positive attitudes in keeping a job, um, maintaining regular attendance, following directions, 
um, on the job phone skills. Some of these are just like, yeah, I wish I could give that course to people um, everywhere. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna bring us to the topic at hand today. And once again, I'm gonna introduce Jennifer. So Jennifer, you can put your video on back up. And um, just wanna thank you so much for being here with us. Jennifer teaches a transitional academics um, as part of the life skills program at Center Grove High School in Indiana. Um, she was an instructional assistant for Hamilton Southeastern High School for a few years before teaching in her own classroom at Center Grove. Um, but she's been there for nine years. And just thank you so much for the work you're doing with those students, Jennifer. I, I think about it and I think about my early days in teaching and think about what y'all are doing right now. And I just take my hat off to every one of you who are on this call, who are in the classroom. This has been the hardest year that nobody ever expected, but what you've learned and what you're about to share here today is just priceless. So we really thank you for being here. And I will um, turn my video off now and I'll let you kind of uh, start from here and go for it. Okay. Yes, as Joyce said, I'm Jennifer. Um, thanks for having me here today. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, if I can click to the next slide, there we go. Um, so a few years back, Indiana implemented some new requirements for students that are earning a certificate of completion. And students earning a certificate of completion are working on modified academic curriculum. They're not assessed at their grade level. So they're really focusing on those employment skills, the vocational independent living, living stuff throughout their day. In some states that is considered a general diploma, but here in Indiana, it's a certificate of completion. So part of earning that certificate of completion is creating a transition portfolio. And that's kind of been the big thing um, here in Indiana for a while and possibly some other states too. So it is required for any student that is in special education, not just students earning a certificate of completion. But I think that this particular group of students really has a unique opportunity to showcase some of their abilities through creating this portfolio. So basically the portfolio is just a collection of information and materials related to a student's academic and work-related activities. So the transition portfolio will help students share things like their learning characteristics, their academic skills, and what I think is really important, their employability skills. And that's where this curriculum kind of really helps with that. Um, you'll be able to, or sorry, let me back up. I think sometimes showcasing a student's employability skills through this portfolio um, is really important for students in life skills that are earning a certificate. I think sometimes employers see the lack of a diploma as um, you know, a negative or a hindrance to them being a good employee. And I think if you've got a really good portfolio that you can share with employers, they might just change their mind and they can see that these students do have a lot of skills and a lot of things to bring to the table. So the curriculum offered through Education Associates is perfect at helping with this. Um, I do have a few examples up on the screen of different checklists and rating scales that come with the curriculum. So there is the work performance benchmarks that can show growth over time, which can be good for goals um, and just, you know, a list of skills, very specific skills that students are able to do on their own. And then there's also competency lists that they provide. And that's um, the other two boxes kind of at the bottom. So some of those skills will apply to any job, um, as Joyce was saying earlier, kind of those soft skills. And then there are also lists that are more job specific. So those are all um, just really easy to show an employer a list of things that this student is able to do. So that is transition portfolio. Sorry, I'm having trouble switching screens here. Um, but what I get really excited about is just is the curriculum itself and like the day to day in the classroom and some different activities that with a little out of the box thinking we've been able to make happen here at Center Grove. So when I first started at Center Grove, the idea of teaching 
careers and job skills to students was very overwhelming. I know there are probably teachers out there that have spent hours upon hours upon hours <laughs> creating different job tasks and the task analysis lists, um, trying to teach students these skills. And this curriculum gives it all to you. And it's so easy to follow and it's, it's just great because what it comes down to is we wanna introduce a topic to the students. Um, we might need to do some demonstration and then give them time to practice these skills so that when they do go out to a job, they've got some background knowledge and they've got some skills already. So the pictures there on the screen um, show the first look book, which introduces the topic to the students. This can be done independently. It can be done with an instructional assistant in small groups, or you can do it as a whole class. And then the bottom picture is an example um, from the food service that is like one step within that activity. So it's very clear what they should be doing. There's pictures. Not only is that good for the students to see, but if you're not familiar yourself as a staff person with food service, then that can be helpful. Um, I personally still work at a restaurant one day a week, so this is really easy for me, but landscaping, not my cup of tea, not something that I'm really good at. So the step-by-step -step for that curriculum has been very helpful as a teacher as well. So what we decided to do is take these curriculum and the um, things that we've been practicing in the classroom and just take it a step further so that students were able to practice with real products and real people. So um, we created the C3 store with the retail stock and the C3 Bistro with the food service. Um, and before I get into those, I do wanna mention community trips. Those are also a huge part of just generalizing some skills for students. And you know, we've gone to different uh, businesses out in the community. We have had um, some people come into the classroom, which again is great if I'm not as familiar with that career and they can kind of do many activities with the students in the classroom. We've also visited businesses that employ student or um, people with disabilities. So that's been um, really helpful as well. Obviously with COVID, that's kind of put a damper on some things, but we are still trying to get something with the community done. Um, so here's some pictures from this year with food service there on the left. Um, you know, we weren't able to go to a restaurant, so we had the restaurant brought to us. And we talked about how restaurants are, you know, trying to keep up with business in a COVID world and having those delivery services available. So it was a whole lesson. And then we ordered lunch from um, a restaurant and had it delivered to the high school where we could kind of spread out in the gym and have our lunch. And then the other picture um, on the right, those are my boys, Brayden and Josh, and they are wrapping presents from Amazon. So we had talked about working in a retail store. We can't go to a store right now. So we got on Amazon and that was another whole lesson. And they picked out presents for their friends and family members with money that we had made from the store. And we got to spread out in the gym and wrap presents that day. So it was a lot of fun. They really enjoyed it. So the C3 store is kind of a big deal here at Center Grove High School. Um, we've been doing it for a few years now. And it started with, I had the retail stock curriculum and you can see the picture on the left. It's kind of hard to see, but Gracie there, she's got like um, the price tagging gun in her hand and that comes with the curriculum. So she's practicing um, tagging different clothing items. And then Sam there is um, actually tying on a price tag to the hat. So they just practice those skills within the classroom. And then you've got Xander there on the right who's practicing, you know, hanging up clothes, organizing by size, all of that kind of stuff. And then again, we had, a, you know, an idea to take this a step further. And so we asked for donations of items that we could sell to real customers. And the C3 store was born. So a few years later, we are now, um, the C3 store has grown tremendously. Sorry, once again, slide, there we go. Um, we started out pretty small and now it is 
a big deal. We've been doing this for three or four years now. And um, you can tell which pictures were pre-COVID. We didn't have to wear our masks. Um, this past fall, we had over 20 different vendors that um, we were able to sell their items for. And this student sold over $3,000 worth of merchandise in just three days. So that was pretty neat to see. Most of the money does go back to the vendors. So Sam there at the bottom left, um, he's, those are items that a fellow teacher has made and sells. And so we um, collect the money and then most of that money goes back to her. Uh, but we do take a small portion of the money to pay for community trips, to pay for that Amazon shopping that we did. Um, and also we donate to local charities as well with that money. So students are able to work on sales skills. They can talk to customers. Sometimes they live in their own little bubble and they don't get to talk to a lot of different staff members. So this is really good for their social skills, kind of put them out there a little bit more. They have to learn about the merchandise. They work on creating the displays and organizing it all. Um, Sam up there in the right-hand corner at the computer, he's taking inventory. So everything that we sell is rung up in a Google form. So we know exactly what we sold and what we have to pay people back for. And then you've got Macy there um, next to him with the cash register. So it's real money and real people and real stuff. Uh, but so they just, they have a lot of fun with it. I also have a student who has her own t-shirt business. So she designed and made those two t-shirts on the right um, that Carson and Drew there are showing. And um, so that's been helpful for her to grow her business. And then um, it's nice for us too, because we get to look, make a little bit of money off of it. She also makes our shirts um, that you can see some of the kids wearing. Um, those are our official store shirts that they have to wear when they're working. So this started out as just something to kind of spice things up a bit, um, but it's really, it's turned into an annual event. So now I teach this curriculum every year for the store so that we can um, get prepared for that. And I think without opportunities like this, you know, students, they follow a schedule, sure, but it's like, it's through, it's through the bell. So with this schedule, they have um, a different kind of schedule to follow and there's no bell tied to it. Um, you know, they're practicing their social skills along with the money and that kind of stuff too. Um, they get to see what it feels like to have a line of customers waiting for you to count money and to ring things in. Um, and they also get to feel or know what it feels like to earn money for a job. Um, they, I started this new this year where the students were paid per shift. So they, um, the more shifts they worked, the more money they got at the end of this. And that was interesting to see um, this year as compared to previous years. And I'm sure like the whole money aspect of it might make some teachers nervous um, with administration support we were able to make it work here at Center Grove. There's a purpose behind the students earning this money. There's a plan for it. I don't just give um, the students like 20 bucks and say, you know, thanks for working today. Um, there's a plan. So it's either for the community trip or it's for the Amazon shopping gifts. It's, there's a lesson to it. There's a purpose and a plan and all that. Um, so I don't wanna get too much into the financial stuff of it, but if you do have questions, um, please just let us know. One of the other activities that we have done is the C3 Bistro. Sorry guys, I don't know why it's not working. There we go. Um, students learn, um, again, they are learning and working on skills in the classroom with the Education Associates curriculum. So you can see there on the right, the girls are practicing setting the table. They also talk about how to plate food so that it looks nice. Um, they practice taking orders, um, but, you know, they work on um, cashing customers out. You've got Michael up there getting his cash register ready. And then we just wanted to take it a step further again. So we created a little bistro and the students, it was really neat because it was, they got to choose all this stuff. They chose what food we served. They chose like the atmosphere of the bistro, what kind of music we were gonna have in the background, what kind of lighting, all of that kind of stuff. They took the orders, they served the food, they cashed out the customers. And again, they're just getting to practice some of those real world skills um, within the school and kind of a 
more structured but less structured environment. Um, you know, they're following their work schedule. They're talking to people that they don't know. Um, with restaurants, a lot of time you're on a time crunch because people got to get in and get out. And especially if you are um, serving teachers for lunch, we get 30 minutes for lunch. So we got to get you in and get you out. So we had to talk about exactly what kind of food could we serve within those time limits. Um, so that was really fun too. And we do have a video. Um, from a few years back of one of my students. And this is Mary. And so you'll get to see a little bit more of the bistro. I don't think the sound is working. Can anybody help? I'm gonna fix it. Hang on. And that they really like getting up and moving around. It's, it's kind of cool okay. to see because Mary, the server, she um, we were short a student, I think, that day. And so she had to you serve see. during both lunches. We did two different sets of customers. And so she's talking about. Oh. You wanna start it up again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If I can get it to go back. There you go. There we go. Okay, sorry, guys. because everybody goes out to eat everybody has a favorite restaurant everybody you know has knows something about working in a restaurant just from being there so they have a lot to say in the discussions and they really like getting up and moving around it's, it's kind of cool to see because Mary the server she um, we were short a student I think that day and so she had to serve during both lunches we did two different sets of customers and so she's talking about oh I gotta eat lunch before my shift or do I want to eat lunch after my shift Really great for the kids to get up and get moving and to practice. He's with you. We love Mary. So that was us, the bistro in my classroom. And just a few more things I kind of wanted to touch on quickly. Um, Center Grove, like I'm sure um, many schools have been on a lot of different schedules this year. Um, we are typically on a block schedule. So it's four classes a day, about an hour and a half period, which I personally like for this curriculum. You can really like dive deep into the skills that you're practicing. But for a while, we were on um, an eight block a day period. So the classes were only about 40, 45 minutes and the curriculum still worked for that. So normally I would introduce the topic. We talk about the materials and then do the activities. So instead of doing that all in one class period, we just did it, you know, the intro stuff on one day and the activities on the next day. We've been on hybrid for quite some time now where only half the kids are there. That honestly didn't really change my life too much because most of my students still came every day. They had that opportunity available to them. But if you did have half your kids at home, then they could work on the employability skills, the job skills, like that soft skill stuff, um, either independently online or they could Zoom with an instructional assistant and work on stuff that way. And then when they're in person, they can do like the hands on activities and stuff with the teacher. Even um, if you have, if you're completely virtual. Um, so when we got shut down last March, I was teaching food service. So I had to like think real quick, okay, how do I teach food service through a computer screen? How do we practice this stuff? So it was a lot of video recording um, on my part. And then also the students did a really neat project where they served a meal to a a family member or to a stuffed animal or to just an empty room. And so it just so that they could practice the steps of taking an order, they recorded themselves and turned it in online. So that was really fun to see. And I wish I would have found some of those videos. Also in Indiana, students can stay until they're 22 years old. And I think in other states, it might be even up to 25. So repeating curriculum has been a concern. We don't want students to just doing the same thing over and over again. Um, I, Center Grove has fortunate enough to own a few of these kits, but you can also repeat this and it 
the kids never really get bored with it. Um, I mean, like I said, I teach the store curriculum every school year in preparation for the store and the kids that have done it two or three times, they just jump right in. It's good refresher for them. Um, they can become group leaders. They can teach the other kids these skills that they've mastered. I mean, that just really shows you that they have mastered the skills if they can teach other students. The curriculum is also perfect for instructional assistants and getting them involved and having them feel like they've got um, a lesson that they can do. It's step-by-step -step instructions. The um, evaluations are super clear with you know, how you're evaluating the kids, what you're evaluating them on. So um, all of that has been really easy to use. I did talk about the career kits mostly, but there are also the um, life skills and the job skills that Joyce was talking about at the beginning. And that's really good for anybody. I could see parents utilizing that outside agencies. Um, that's really good for students if you are in a hybrid or an e-learning situation because it's pretty easy to click through. It reads it to you. Um, students can work independently or in small groups pretty easily. And last, I love a good app. And so with this curriculum, I found it very easy to take the lessons and the activities and just adapt it real quick with an app. So we've done lessons in Nearpod with it. They've practiced their vocabulary in Quizlet. Um, they've recorded themselves doing different activities, different tasks in Flipgrid. We've done, you know, what would you do in this situation game through Kahoot. There's just a lot of different things that you can do with this. Um, so I will stop there, but um, please let us know if you have any questions about what I was saying. And I think Joyce is going to take back over. <laughs> First, before I take back over, I just have to come in, like give multiple. I wish I only had more, to, more than just two thumbs uh, to give you a thumbs up. Really great. And especially like this last piece that you're just dropping in there. I didn't even know from our last conversations about using some of these other apps, um, the Nearpod, the Quizlet, the Flipgrid, and Kahoot. We've had a couple of people tell us about that. And I think what's special about that is that in this curriculum, Education Associates gives you the thumb drive of all of the files. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can you can literally copy and paste yep. yeah. in yeah. a second. And, and I, I did, I put some of the pre and post tests into a Google form and made it a quiz and things like that. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel for anything. Yeah, we um, canvas here and so yeah you can copy paste right into a canvas quiz or something like that too yeah that's Super easy. great that's really great i don't use canvas as much but i have been on google um classroom and they're really all the same it's basically you have your your kiddos and you can make assignments with due dates and then they can send things back to you um we had several questions um in the chat from people asking just about things like um you know can you can you do the, how did you do that, the bistro during COVID-19? Did you have any um, ability to do that or is that? No, so I taught that last year when we were completely shut down. So we were just getting ready to have that. Um, and honestly, this year, if we were doing it, I probably wouldn't serve real food to real people right now. Um, we are able to like spread out in the gym and eat. So, I mean, you might be able to, if everybody's at their own separate table, mm -hmm. as long as, you know, the people that are there eating are willing to you know, participate. It's just like some people are willing to go to restaurants and some aren't right now. So, I mean, yeah. I can see it working. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I loved that, um, you know, making the, the gym into your restaurant or into your retail store. That's, you know, that's, that's golden. Just, you know, it really made a lot of sense and gave them all the same kind of pieces as they're going on through. So um, let's see, I'm going to go back to some of the questions that we had. Oh, one question that I'd seen before was, um, with the bistro pre-COVID, did you have problems with the school's um, lunch system that, that, you know, where they, they have their own regular food services, right? Was there any sort of uh, com competition there or how did you? Um, um, and I think that's because we weren't serving to students. We were serving to staff members. So mm -hmm. I think you would run into a problem if you opened up you know, like a buffet and, you know, had students come in and that kind of stuff. Um, but we were just serving to a handful of teachers. So it was fine. Yeah. 
That's good. That was a good question. I forgot the name because it got off my screen already. Yeah. Um, but um, there's another one. Valerie is asking, I just have questions for Jennifer. How is the store and bistro open? And how many students are in a class? Mm -hmm. So I have um, anywhere years fluctuate, usually like eight to 12 in a class. Um, this year, I actually have two careers classes. So it's about eight and eight. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then what was the other question? The and, and how many, yeah, how many students are in the class or how is the store open? How is it, how is it, uh, how often, sorry, how often oh, is how often? the yeah. and bistro open? Yeah, um, we just do that once a year. So it's kind of, I do one career a year. So we are focused on like just food service for the year. So we practice in the classroom, practice in the classroom, and then we start designing our restaurant or our bistro. Um, so that's kind of the spring semester thing. And then the store became so popular that we kind of do a crash course in retail stock using the curriculum. And then um, we hold that. We try to make it for the week before um, Thanksgiving, because we want you to spend your money at our store before you go Black Friday shopping. <laughs> and that was a pure tutor. That was, I had no, no input on that. Um, that was a pure tutor of mine that suggested that. That's great. So, that is real yeah. marketing that Just you're kind of giving people ideas. Sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, definitely yeah. People just once, yeah, just once a year that we do it. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Nice. Um, Suzanne asked, do you teach a food safety course? We talk, so we also have um, what's called an adult roles class, and um, we're actually looking at purchasing some more curriculum to help with that because they believe you do have a food safety um, and nutrition and that kind of stuff through the life skills portion of it. Um, so we cover that in the adult roles class. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and I, I really did like up front because you were looking at our benchmarks and the materials that we have within the curriculum. You considered it as part of the portfolio for the students. Mm -hmm. um, how do, do you review those portfolios with the parents, um, like during IEP meetings or at other times? How do they react to it? Yeah, it's in the process. Um, I think it's our sophomores that are the first class that this is required for. And so there, I have a few sophomores in my careers class, but not all of them take it until they're a junior or senior year. Um, but yeah, it's reviewed annually. It's, yeah, it's part of what we talk about in the IEP meeting. Um, and we work on it in the careers class or in resource and um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, here's another one from Kathy. This is a great question. Um, what does a typical day in your classroom look like using the curriculum? As if anybody in special ed has a typical day, but you know what she means, right? What, is it, what does it look like as you go through that? Um, when we're getting ready to do one of the activities, because the curriculum with the careers, there's kind of like some intro stuff, some vocab work, that kind of stuff. But when we get down to actually doing an activity, um, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier, we introduce the topic with the first lookbook, and we talk about that. And then we get out our materials for that activity. We talk about the different materials, what they're used for, what are their names. And then we just start at the top with the student instructions and it's super easy to follow. I mean, it tells you exactly step one, step two. Um, and then we usually split into groups because I do sometimes have like eight kids. So if it's me and my assistant and I have a peer tutor, we can split into three groups and share materials. Um, so the students get a little more hands-on with that many kids in a room. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I am going through the various questions. Michelle, are there any questions that you saw that I may have missed? There are so many questions. Thank you, folks. This is such an active chat. Um, truly appreciate yes. this. Lots of engagement. Um, were there any other yes, questions? Yes, so I am. Okay. Yes, I am trying my best to keep up. <laughs> so I apologize, everybody. I'm working hard, but there's lots coming in, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so let's see. Um, do you have, one of them that I got was, um, do you have any ideas for strictly virtual setting? Strictly virtual, um, I mean, everything. So we, our virtual students are highly, highly encouraged to Zoom into class every day. So if we are working on food service, anything that we're teaching, doing the instructions, all of that's posted on Canvas and they can zoom into the room, and then they can practice setting a table. Most students have these materials at home. 
that they can get their hands on. If not, the school has money, we can purchase that, we can um, drop that off to them. I'm sure there's grants that you can write if your school doesn't have the money to purchase it. Um, there's different ways to get your hands on some extra materials if the kid does need them at home. Um, that would be my suggestion. Um, we haven't been virtual for very long, so I haven't had to do like a full year of careers virtually. And, and people are kind of all across the board around the country. Um, you said your school is going back full-time face-to-face oh, next week. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard from some folks um, the other day who were saying that they made the final decision that they won't go back face-to-face -face till the fall. Yeah, and then yeah. we have everything in between. So it, it, really is, um, it really is all across the board. I'm gonna share with everybody in a little bit how you can get more information and where we keep all of these uh, webinars and you'll be able to see not just this one, but others that we've done. So there's a lot of other suggestions that we had. Um, the one thing I will kind of trickle on in here, uh, but I did do a couple of um, training sessions this past week about the new um, CARES 2 funding mm -hmm. um, that's just been approved by the Congress and it's $130 billion. It's, gonna, it's like double whatever we've received thus far but it's one-time funds, right? Mm -hmm. The cool part about these materials is that they are a one-time purchase. Yeah. So the other folks in your district may be raising their hands. You need to be the squeaky wheel and raise your hands and say, this is a one-time purchase and it can help us prepare kids to transition into the workforce because that's what that money is supposed to be used for. So just saying that I've seen a couple of questions asking about funding and so forth. And, um, and I think that's a really relevant point in, the, in this time, in this day and age and everything. Um, Michelle, other questions I may have missed? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, somebody just asked, do you provide food handler certificates? I built, there are certifications or I wouldn't say certification. There are certificates that come with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, Joyce, correct me if I'm wrong though. It is different than like the serve safe certification. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So it's not the state level certification, but it's a great place to lead them to. Mm -hmm. So we do have certificates that come with the program. There's also something that we have called digital badge credentials. And we just did a webinar on it last month. And when I show you where all these webinars are in a second, you'll see it there. Um, but the digital badge credentials are pretty cool because those are things that you could show to prospective employers mm -hmm. and, it and you can have the whole list of the criteria that the student mastered to get that badge. And I just think if you walk on in and say, here, this student has done this and here's, you know, here's the badge and here's the list of criteria of what he's done give them a shot. Um, I think people would. And I think that that's a, a really cool thing to be looking at. So in Johnson uh, County here, we have a vocational school. And so this curriculum really helps get the kids ready. If they do want to go on to the vocational school, you know, college might not be in their future, but right. this vocational school, they could stay, you know, past their traditional four years. And mm -hmm. at that vocational school, they can get their serve safe. So this is kind of a good intro to that, a good stepping stone if they want to continue on. Yeah, absolutely. And we have some other courses like the um, automotive detailing course yeah. that I think, as I looked at all the criteria, and I think that that really prepares students for going to take, let's say, an OSHA course. And, and in some of our construction yeah. pieces, it's, it's not an OSHA course yeah. itself, but it is a, um, it's preparation for that. So it kind of gives them that, that sense of when they're getting to it. So cool. Um, anything else, Michelle? We've got a couple more minutes we can ask and then I'll go in yeah. where they can find more things. Um, so one, a good one that just came in, are there any modifications or adapted tools for non-ambulatory students? Yes, right. there are adapted kits, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the reading levels are all different too. And then yes, there are adapted kits. Yeah. Um, and I have um, not used them, but. Oh, that's interesting. So you're using our general yes. uh, curriculum piece of it. So we've taken all of that general curriculum that Jennifer's been using mm -hmm. and we provided it in a adapted format, which just means we added in a whole bunch of evidence-based practices, um, video modeling, visual scheduling, systems of diminishing proms, just visual supports all over the place. Um, so that's one adaptation we've done. But I also read into that question that they're asking about um, 
more assistive technology, right? So being able to adapt things for students that need modifications because they may not have the same fine motor coordination skill or they may be um, using other sorts of assistive technology devices. This whole curriculum is provided, and as said, we said before, on a, flat, on a thumb drive in real Microsoft Office files. So you've got Word and PowerPoint and just straight videos. So if you can use, let's say a screen reader or a, um, a switch, adaptive switch for whatever type, customized for whatever students need. If you can use that to get through a regular Word document or a PowerPoint document, they can access everything here. So for the most part, that's pretty darn accessible because Microsoft has made um, their standard office suite really accessible. So that's um, pretty cool. And I think that might answer their question. Okay. Okay. And then um, how, let's see, how do you, um, hang on a second. I'm trying to uh, understand what they're, okay. So how do you involve parents in this process so that skills are carried over at home, such as cleaning? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a great virtual assignment. So we've been doing e-learning on Wednesdays, so I can share information. And through Canvas, parents can also monitor students. I don't know if Google Classroom is the same way. Um, so they do have access to all of the stuff that I post on Canvas. And you can just send, you know, this is what we talked about this week. These are the skills that we're working on. And then um, that was actually the student's job um, today for e-learning was to do a job at home and um, post a picture of them doing it and you know, tell me what job it was that they did. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty easy to involve them in it, yeah. Yeah, and, and we do include a brochure for parents. I don't know if you've seen that, Jennifer, but it's just to give them kind of an idea of what's been going on. Um, I'm gonna take the screen back and share a little bit about some things. We'll keep chatting while we do it, but um, there are some, oh, here, here's where we're supposed to ask questions. Well, we did that. <laughs> Um, so, so I'll share a little bit about some of these things so that you can kind of see where they are and those resources um, that you can share with parents are, are there as well. I'm going to um, I'll only add my toolbar in here so you can see some of these things. So the, the webinar Wednesdays that we're, we're doing right now here today, um, they're on our website, educationassociates.com under resources. Um, there's a webinar Wednesdays. And so this is where you can go. And I just consider this, this was like our learning experience last June. We said, okay, we've got great tips from people about remote learning. We've got to go start, you know, shouting at the mountaintop and letting people know. And I did the first couple of them. And then as we got into August, we started inviting guest speakers like Jen Jennifer. And so there's a whole bunch that are in here um, the October one is specifically really about the life skills, some of those soft skills. The um, November one is an administrator who came on in uh, from South Carolina, Cheryl Hubbard-George, and she talked from the administrator's perspective. Um, in January, because it was January 6th, we uh, were really uh, hard to get a teacher to come and talk with us. So I did a recap. So if you don't have time to watch all of these videos, you can come in on January 6th and you'll get like the quick recap of all of them. Then you can figure out which ones make sense. And then we did that digital badge credentialing, which would be interesting for any of those people who are interested in those digital badge credentials. Um, our next one will be posted here soon, right? Um, Michelle, like tomorrow. Um, we'll have, yeah, we'll have it. Today or tomorrow, yeah. Uh, and it will be on April 7th, I believe. And um, that's going to be with uh, uh, Tracy Hall from Branson, Missouri. So really excited to have Tracy in. She, I think she's here in the audience today. So, um, you know, no pressure, Tracy. <laughs> you, know, you got Jennifer's uh, bar here to, to kind of hit, but um, yeah, sure. Tracy and I just did a similar mm -hmm. presentation about preparing students with special needs to be successful employees, um, which is a topic we'll talk about in April. And we just did that with the Missouri, the Mo case folks. And it was really, really, popular and so we figured we'd come and do it again here, Big Tent. So that's kind of one thing. And then um, the next thing, so a lot of resources there on the webinar Wednesday. Oh, then the next thing is our remote learning resources. So the remote learning resources, again, on our website under resources, remote learning, we've taken a lot of this information that we've gathered from educators and we've kind of summarized it here 
put some suggestions in, and then we actually went into the curriculum and title by title, we pulled out things that you can access at home so that you could find ways um, to help parents work their way through it. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that really helps parents is that benchmark, right? Those, those steps that we've already done the task analysis. And for instance, in the table service kit, it's 16 steps to set a table. And mom or dad or a guardian or whomever can be looking at and say, okay. And if they have to prompt, whether it's verbally or hand over hand or however they're prompting the student to go through that, they write down on the benchmark. Okay, I help them with this, I help them with that. And then they keep making attempts so that hopefully after two or three attempts are doing it independently. And you can get real data from that, but it guides that data gathering. And um, Jennifer, I think you had even said you had people take pictures, right? Um, they did little videos of, of themselves. Yeah, yeah, my student, they recorded themselves going through those steps of taking an order. And so, yeah, I could get really good data off of that. that that's um, yeah. awesome. It's, it's Having other people evaluate students has always been kind of like a nerve wracking thing for me, but with the step-by-step, -step, like you said, it's so easy. I mean, any instructional assistants, parents, anybody can do it. Yeah, peer tutors, yeah. yeah. And you know, it's, it is the, it's a great data point to capture, but it also becomes like a social story for the kiddo who can look back and now see themselves doing it. And then they can think to themselves, oh, I should have done this that way. Or maybe the fork belongs on that side of the plate. You know, and they can almost auto-correct or see those things a little bit more, you know, pointed because they're seeing themselves do it. I, I used a lot of social stories in past life and I'm sure many of you do as well. And it's just, we have it incorporated as one of our um, evidence-based practices. The other thing we did is we worked with some teachers and Holly Meyer, who was another one of our speakers in December, I want to say, um, she helped and several other teachers helped us create this guide. And we've got this for our general curriculum, our adapted and for the life skills. And we just went through each of the types of activities in the curriculum. And then we suggest, here's one way you could use this in class. Here's a way you could use it if they were remote distance learning. And here's a way if it was sort of hybrid, you know, you have AB days or whatever it might be. Um, and that's free. This is just all of these webinars and all of that remote help. And this is all free um, to help folks just kind of cope because like we said, this is a crazy time. Um, here's another thing that's free and it's on every single one of our pages at the bottom. There's this like red box there where you can sign up for a newsletter. And we have a team that does a great job at summarizing the things that we're learning. So if you sign up for those newsletters, they come once a month. So you're not going to have a ton of email promise. Um, and then secondly, it, it's full of professional development tips and tricks. It's really um, mm -hmm. packed full. So I suggest that you go and sign up for one of those newsletters and um, there's even on the website, a place where we have a interactive um, preview packet. So if you don't use the materials, you can download one of these. It's, I'll show you again on the website, but it's got a lot of things you can actually hear and see and some of our activities and so forth. So it's really, it's really neat. It explains all of the things that are in the kits and, um, and you can see here that the kits themselves come with real items, real tools. Um, you know, we've got a real drill in the construction kit. We actually used it at a conference um, one year, a case, the, the banner was falling down and we took the drill and we were able to screw it back together. And I was really glad that it was it had battery um, because it's a, a wireless drill like anybody would use. It's a real tool. Um, so please feel free, you can find that um, it just, it says it on our website in probably a dozen spots, download our interactive preview packet, it's free. Um, and then the Zoom overview, I told you at the beginning, if you want more information and want to ask your own questions live and have your own personal thing, um, we've got it back again on that resources page. You can schedule a personal um, Zoom overview. It literally has calendar of availability and I will join you and we can, you know, you can say, well, you know, we have our staff meeting at two o'clock on Thursday. You know, can we book one of these days? And you can just book it and it's free and you can, you know, have 
a nice overview and go into depth with your staff and ask your own questions and things like that. So um, we do invite you to go ahead and look at that. Um, and I think that brings us pretty close. Are there any other questions that popped into the chat? If I hadn't been looking while I've been talking. Yes, um, so we have two questions. Uh, one is a question about uh, if we have any material for families to use in other languages. And then the other one wanted to know um, if any students had transitioned into real jobs in the community from this. Oh, good. Um, do you, Jennifer, do you wanna just talk about the uh, any transition and you have um, any relationships with business owners in your community? Yeah, we um, actually, our juniors and seniors go out into the community and job train. And we have actually been able to still do that through COVID. So, um, you know, talking about retail stock, we've got students that were hired um, by Meyer and, um, or sorry, Walmart, one of the two, sorry. Um, we've got students that um, are at Goodwill. Um, we actually have a um, privately owned like little boutique um, in tiny little uh, Bargersville that's close to Greenwood. And so students work there, um, which is retail stock as well. Um, I do have a student that works at Fazoli's. So we've worked on some food service stuff and now he's working at Fazoli's. Um, so yeah, it's, they've, they're out there, they're working. Nice. And we have had, um, we actually have data on our site that will, um, we can go into in greater depth that just talks about, uh, let's say in um, is it Red River Parish in Louisiana, where she was not just getting students into jobs, but then we'd go back and look like a year later and they were retained and they were really still in the job. And so I'm going to do a surprise here to Michelle because she didn't know I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to just share one quick little short little video. We still have a couple of moments and you guys are going to love this because here's Ryan. Let me get the sound going. Go back. This is the boss. Resource at Depot is a Depot. nonprofit organization. We deal in repurposed and reused items that have another life to live. The uh, Project Discovery kids that we've got here, I've noticed that they come in with a whole variety of skills and abilities. When I come and work in the mornings, um, I um, make sure they have everything clean, everything put up, ready for shopping, make sure nothing on the floor that can break or get hurt on any, anybody on the floor. Project discovery, cleaning and maintenance help me do my job. In the milk kit, I learned how to sort and, and do it here. If he hadn't gone through this program, I can't imagine what his life would be. Ryan would do anything I asked him to do and do it well. I had to stay on my toes because he'd get a job done so fast and come back and say, well, now what can I do? He actually is employed now with us and he's been a joy to have. All right, so um, when it comes to job skills and really getting kids super ready for a real job, yeah. That's, that's exactly what this is about. And I love this kid because the boss, it keeps the boss on his toes. <laughs> so, um, and then Jennifer, uh, Michelle, you had asked the other question, are any of these materials available in other languages? At this time, they're not, but they are completely accessible. You have this thumb drive and you can open up the file and it's not perfect, but Google Translate does a pretty good job. Um, in fact, if I go back to the one we were in, uh, Google is doing the closed captioning in, in our uh, presentation here. I forgot to turn it on at the very beginning, but Ben reminded me. Um, it's not perfect closed captioning, but it's pretty good and it's free and it's there. Um, so yeah, the, the materials are accessible in lots of different ways. And if you've got something special about how you can help us figure that out better. My email's right there or Michelle's email's right there. Give us a, an email and let's talk about that further. As I said in the beginning, this material, this curriculum has evolved over the past 40 years to be what it is, which is usable in any kind of situation that you might need. And we can only keep making it better by working together. So if you've got a good idea, whoever asked that question, 
take a screenshot right now of our email addresses and send us a note. We'd love to talk. Um, Joyce, we have one more. Do you mind if I ask one more question? Because we've had several people ask this, so I got to ask. Um, a lot of people want to know if um, if we use the curriculum for one class period each day, um, or if it's an all day curriculum. Like, do and then uh, another one said, um, yeah, one class per day, or do they rotate through your classroom each day? Like, how does that work? What's that structure? Mm -hmm. Um, I teach a careers class, so it's one class period. We're on block scheduling, so it's every other day. Um, it's a 90-day curriculum, so that 90 days does take me for a full year. There's some of that employability and social skills stuff that can repeat um, each year, but there's nothing wrong with repeating that stuff. The students need reminders of that. I used to teach it for an entire afternoon. It was kind of like an English math careers all in one. And um, so that, I mean, that worked too. And we would just, you know, have some supplemental reading and extra math to practice, you know, the cashier skills and things like that. I person, I personally now just teach it once every other day. Okay, cool. And we've got lots of iterations of that um, around. So the job skills training is, as Jennifer said, it's a 90 hour um, curriculum. That, like I kind of consider it first semester, second semester, because we have a beginning and an advance in each of those titles. Um, in the career exploration and or the adapted, there's a 10 through 20 hour scope and sequence. So they're a little shorter, maybe about a month. And then the life skills, those soft skills, they're about 10 hours. So it's a, it's a couple of weeks, but it depends on um, your students and how fast you can go through things or how many times you need to repeat them. Um, and once again, I think I said in the beginning, the, the instructional guide is really well thought out. Mm -hmm. um, but here's where you can make the adaptations that fit your schedule. If it's every other day as Jennifer's is, or if you have block scheduling or however the kiddos are coming on into, you can really kind of make it your own as you're going along. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, we are just about out of time. And I know that most of our people have to go back to teach classes and things like that. Um, I saw that perhaps one of the most common things was can we get a copy of the slides or the presentation? This is being recorded and um, we will put it up on that site, but I believe that they also do a, a mass mailing to everybody who's signed on up here and you all will get um, a link to that as well. Uh, so I think that kind of covers one of the most popular questions that, that came up um, quite a bit. And um, anything else, Michelle, that we wanted to remember to tell folks, um, April 7th. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Yeah. And join us again. On yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is every month, first Wednesday of the month. And, you know, we'll be here with a different speaker. We're excited that we got to have Jennifer this time, but it's different every month. So, you know, please join us again. And other than that, you know, I know we got lots and lots of questions. I did my best to answer all of them. But if there's anything that I did not get to answer or that, you know, any of us, didn't get to, um, like Joyce said, you can please contact me, um, you know, at uh, mmagram at educationassociates.com. It's right there on your screen. And I am the sales and marketing manager here, and I'm happy to help answer anything that you guys need. So Jennifer, thank you all. Thank you for sharing your kids with us and everything that you do. It's really, <laughs> it's really awesome. I told everybody they were in for a big treat and, you know, once you get to see Mary and that smiling face, you know, <laughs> she's awesome. And well, everybody's awesome. And that's because of the work you're doing. Really, thank you so very much. Uh, join us April 7th with uh, Tracy Hall. And I'm bummed because it is COVID because I'd like to go to Branson, Missouri and do some shopping and um, visit live. <laughs> I'm sure we do some retail therapy there as well, right? Um, so come join us in April and um, everybody have a great day. Be well, be safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, self touch your face, all that good stuff. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Jennifer. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. I think you just ended. Mm.